Yo, what it do, you guys? Welcome back to another video. Now, in today's video, we're going to be covering Hildren. She recently received some buffs and a brand new augment as well. The augment is called Aegis Gale. So this build is going to be centered around that. It's also going to be centered for Steel Path. So I'm going to rattle some stuff off here. If you are newer to the game, maybe some of this stuff might not make sense, but I'll try and make sure that I can... Uh, explain things as easy to understand as possible even for newer players or people who don't play the game all right but for the most part there's gonna be still path which is kind of like end game kind of content if you will so from there onwards let's go and rattle off some of the stuff that actually happened with hildren uh, to start things off with she received a couple of buffs now her bail fire which is her first ability as this is her exalted pistol um it's been increased in damage so it now does 1500 base damage up from 1000 uh, i'll put all of this on the screen here as well um her max charge uh, per shot um, now is cheaper on shields. It used to be 400 shields. It's now only 200. And she also is now staggers enemies instead of ragdolling them when she's oil shielded, which I'm not going to lie to you. That alone plus the base damage is probably the two best things. I don't mind about the shield cost, but uh, yeah, ragdolling enemies was not fun. So her fourth ability, which is Asia Storm, also received a whole bunch of buffs as well. So it now auto equips Balefire when you activate it. So she now gets both of those straight away. Um, it's now better fluidity. So the movement, the max speed, acceleration, hover ascension, all of that stuff has been tweaked. So it definitely feels a lot nicer using the ability than what it was in the past. It was very slow, sluggish, and it didn't feel great. Uh, now, the most important thing to going to take away from this is Heldrin can now use pillage her second ability and subsumables which we'll get to a little bit later um whilst in flight on her age of storm which is massive this is the biggest thing to take away from this because it now allows us to actually work with an age of storm build so thumbs up from me that's what we're going to be doing now uh furthermore she's not locked in place when shooting balefire anymore so she doesn't stay completely uh stationary in the air which was always weird so she can now move while shooting and age of storm now uh, when it's deactivated gives you iframes for a short time um it's basically going to stop her dying so if you deactivate it and she's like flying towards like the ground um she uh she doesn't just have like bugged bugged out animations and death whatever it's a, they basically fix that to by giving you iframes so you're invulnerable as you come down and when you do slam down into the ground you'll basically lift enemies around you so those are the changes with her. Um, now let's go ahead and get into a build and explain what's going on. So we'll start things off with her abilities and explain what you'll be needing. These are what we're going to be looking for for this kit. So to start things off with is her passive. For those who don't know, um, basically this is a better form of shield gating. Shield gating at a max value, I think it's like 1,250 shields, um, gives you or yields you a return of 2.5 seconds. Well, Hildren, her full shield gate is actually 3.5 seconds. Basically, it's a much stronger version of shield gating so it stops you dying uh, when your shields are fully depleted and gives you 3.5 seconds of a vulnerability as opposed to 2.5 seconds of a vulnerability or scaling down on other frames so her passive is a lot better um her passive is good you get the idea sorry that was always her passive <laughs> um her first ability is bailfire um now she'll basically uh and to quote any of her abilities that she uses she'll basically use shields so she won't use ability warframe energy is what we normally go and just use we use like an energy pool um she doesn't have that she is all about shields so if you want to use an ability she has to use her overall shields is what she has to go and use okay so you use her first ability and then whenever you're shooting you can see there's a drain per shot on there you get the idea and there's also a charge shot and all of that other stuff as well but for the most part um this is just your weapon there's not much else for me to go and say there this is your weapon this is what we're going to be using to shoot okay so her second ability is pillage and pillage works in two different ways the first thing that it does is um defensively um it basically restores your shields but in order to restore your shields it has to leech from enemies that either have shield or enemies that have armor so if enemies don't have shield or armor let's say like the infested faction where they only have health um, obviously it doesn't really work very well there right because there's nothing to leech off of so what's good about this though is that um offensively it works as like a debuff towards those enemies so as i'm leeching and draining their shields away from them you see the drain percentage at the bottom what i'm doing is i'm actually stripping that off of them so i'm making them more vulnerable and more susceptible to incoming damage so if they have less armor they'll take more damage if that makes sense and shields i'm just permanently stripping shields off of them so it works offensively it works defensively 
that is like one of your core abilities. You never really want to get rid of it, okay? This is also her subsumable ability. So you can get this ability for other Warframes if you subsume her to the Helm of, right? So for this build here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dropping off her third ability, which is normally called Haven. And the reason being is because we want to go ahead and focus on a bit of a flying, running, gunning style. So this is all going to be about moving, shooting, moving, shooting, all of that good stuff. So what we want here is we're going to remove her third ability for any ability that can be used as like a buffer towards weapons. Um, so I do have a couple of notes here and I'll talk about a few things just real quickly. Um, so you feel free to go ahead and pause and read my notes if you want to. Um, but anyways, the point is, is that there's going to be mostly like four different abilities that you can use here. So if you have um, subsumed uh, Warframes like Rhino, Mirage, Zaku, or Grendel, uh, any of those are going to be fine, okay? Now, for the most part, I would encourage Zarda's Whisper because it tends to yield more overall damage. Um, this is to do with how Aegis Gale actually works. It's kind of like an ult fire that does like a whole bunch of projectiles. We'll cover that in a moment. And then there's also multi-shot involved. And then due to it having shooting four times with multi-shot and Zarda's Whisper also adds an extra hit. So basically, you turn into this AC 130, okay? Which is really, really nice. So <laughs> look up above his Hildren AC 130. So we're going to go with the starters here. Um, the other ones that you can go for if you don't have a uh, Zaku Warframe subsumed to the Helminth is you can go for Eclipse, which is Mirage. Um, this is also good because Eclipse can go ahead and do two things. I can go ahead and show you the notes here. Um, Eclipse it can be used to increase damage um, when in like tap form if you want to or i think it's hold form depends on how you have it set up but it can also go ahead and give you damage reduction if you either tap or hold the other button so um this can be good for like two completely different reasons um the other war the other abilities can go and use is raw the problem with raw on this build is that due to bail fire currently in the game it has really low um i'll just put the stats here on screen or whatever it's got really low crit chance it's got really low crit multiplier and it's also got really low status chance it basically means you're going quite raw damage but we'll cover a crit build in a moment you're going quite raw damage on it and due to you going quite raw damage on it as well it basically means you're not really getting the true potential from raw it's one thing that it does increase your abilities and your damage and so forth but it's another thing that we really want it for that double dipping factor so if you're doing like slash and heat and so forth and like status builds raw really really shines there but that's not what we're doing so you don't really want raw in the build but you can put it on there if you don't have any of the others okay because rhino is very easy to go and get and subsume quite early so you can use that as a placement for now but ideally you would want to move off of raw okay now the other one you can go do is things like nourish um it gives you the the viral damage offensively which is really good um it can also give you a vulnerability to damage efficacy towards like oricon although i was testing it felt like it wasn't working but i'm pretty certain it does um it does also go ahead and provide um well it, i don't know we don't know if it actually gives a booster here i'm going to say the answer is no which is why i don't have it as a plus right now um so it should give you a multiplier towards energy orbs and if you pick up an energy orb and the way energy orbs with hildren works is um it converts energy orbs to shields but we i couldn't really properly test because my shields kept regenerating at such a rate that i couldn't see if it did i uh, don't know if nourish's multiplier increases the energy multiplier to then give you a bigger shield return okay um, just keep that in mind. Uh, same goes with things like Arcane Energize, but Arcane Energize does proc, but it doesn't actually yield you a bigger return per energy orb. So keep that in mind, which is why I don't know if Nourish Overly works here. So the other things that we got in here is, like I said, um, it's got a low status chance, which means you're not really going to see viral proc that often. And due to being airborne, whenever they go ahead and hit you with Nourish, um, you're also not really going to be proccing the viral buffs as often onto enemies. So basically, long story short here, um, Zarda's Whisper is probably the better thing to go ahead and lean towards. That's what we're going to be taking for the builds. It works out really well with the multi-shot that we're going to be doing. It works out really well with all of the shots that we're going to be doing. Uh, and it also gives an extra hit, which again, is just going to feel really, really nice when you're bombarding everything. Okay, so that's like the overall rundown of it. Um, and then, uh, then finally, we've got Age of Storm. And Age of Storm is also what we're going to be needing because this is the whole point of the build, all right? So we're going to be going straight into Age of Storm and we're going to be moving around. Age of Storm suspends Hildren in air, makes her in flight. Um, any enemy that you can see there will also basically go and get lifted up. And it depends on how high Hildren is. If Hildren's really high, then that that form, I don't know if you can see that ring in the picture, that um, it, it shrinks. 
So if she's low, it expands. If she's high, it shrinks. Just remember that. High shrinks, low, closer to the ground, expands. That's an easy way to, for you guys to understand the crowd control. So although you can go really high, sometimes you want to remain low just to go and crowd control enemies. Um, the other thing to go ahead and realize is when she is in that as well, uh, we will be using her augment. So uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get straight into the build as well. So let's go and talk about what's going on here. So we're going to go and start off with this and I'm going to explain a few things and what's going on. Now, the first thing you are going to be needing is Aegis Gale. Aegis Gale means that Balefire has an alternative fire during Aegis Storm. Uh, the blast deals 15% of Hildren's max shield as additional damage. So we want to remember like max shield is important here but for the most part it now means that balefire now has an alt fire so if you click alt fire when you have this augment balefire is now going to go and shoot out like four projectiles i'm going to show you what this looks like really quickly and really briefly this is what balefire normally looks like this is what the augment does okay that's what's going to happen there so it's now going to go and give you um a bit more of a uh kind of turret gun down from above type uh, value which is really nice and that also scales off your uh, max shield so next thing to go and look at is shields as a whole uh, again do remember in order for Hildren to go ahead and use abilities she needs shield capacity she needs something to go ahead and um use those abilities so primary direction is fantastic if you don't have this use a redirection as a mod it's just a lot lower than that but it will still work now, this one's really, really good because this synergizes significantly with her. Let's read it. Not only does it give you shield capacity, which again is actually going to help your damage, um, and it's going to help you, you know, survival, and it's also going to help, it helps three things. It helps your damage, it helps your survival, and it's also going to help um, the, I can't remember what the other one was. I've forgotten it. I'll keep going. <laughs> I'll cycle back around to it. But on top of, furthermore, then it's also going to help your efficiency. That's what it was. It was going to help your efficiency. Um, it It's the more shields that you have obviously the better that it's going to be because you can go ahead and cast more and more abilities there it was okay sorry <laughs> then what it's going to go and do here is going to reduce damage by 20 percent whilst airborne it's like it was basically designed for hildren um so we get the 20 percent whilst airborne we pair that with aviator so we actually get the 60 percent whilst airborne just straight there lovely jubbly you can't really complain can you and we're going to be airborne most of the time so these three mods right here just basically like best in slots at this point chuck them in whenever you can now as for the aura mods we'll go ahead and cover this a little we'll cover a combat discipline a little bit more in a moment um but the aura mods i would recommend you can either go and go things like aerodynamic which also gives you an extra 24 percent reduced damage whilst airborne so it can help your survival and give you a bit more dr there's nothing wrong with that if you have that mod chuck it in if you don't have that mod corrosive projection will go well if you're taking pillage go and reduce enemy armor it's not really needed as much nowadays so the only other mod that you can go ahead and consider going for is then pistol amp i did this pistol amp it just increases your your bail fire damage by 27 percent. it's not fantastic probably wouldn't really recommend it but you can take it so i'll explain combat discipline a little bit more in a moment okay so let's continue from there onwards now this is really dependent on what you want do you want um more uh do you want more uh, range to go ahead and help um overall your suspension values and uh your blast values and so forth because a little bit more range it just isn't gonna hurt you you don't really have to bump it up though i won't lie to you you can probably keep it at 145 um, so you can probably keep it at 100 i think it's fine so if you want to go and take that out you can but just that little bit of extra you know safety net isn't too bad if you're moving through missions if you're killing really quickly though drop it you don't really need it okay you can just put more damage in here if you want to from there onwards you've got other things like strength strength is just going to give you more damage and more return there's there's not much else for me to teach you guys about strength just bump it up all right just just pump it up it'll help your pillage strip more enemy armor or more enemy shields and convert more towards you it helps you do more damage for balefire it'll help your sardis whippers give you a bigger buff uh, it helps age of stock like it's helping everything strength is just fantastic bump it up if you want to go and get more values from here the other things is efficiency again in this case i've got the streamline and i've got the borrows hatreds so between these two things right now i'm basically making sure that whenever i cast an ability it costs me less shield to go and do so because again i don't want to go and make myself more vulnerable to incoming damage or anything else like that but you probably won't in this build anyways so uh, you could probably bump it down you probably don't need the streamline but you could still go and use the borrows hatreds but those two together definitely is a big safety net 
And then finally, we've got Duration. And Duration is mostly going to be like the overall buff uh, lasting time in this case, uh, mostly for the Zardas Whisper. But again, the good thing is, is that it's recastable whilst you're airborne. So that's also kind of nice. You can bump it up if you want to. It's not overly needed. Um, I would say that if I had to go and replace things, I would probably want, again, more shield is great because it helps my damage. And more damage is great because it helps my damage. <laughs> more strength that helps my damage. That's probably where I'd go. So I have Precision Intensify in here, 90% ability strength towards your fourth ability, just means that I get more out of the Age of Scale. Um, if you do have that, whack it in. Um, Transient Fortitude, just to go and give me a little bit more strength. It does hurt my duration a little bit, but again, it's not enough for me to like panic or worry. And then I do have Constitution in here. There is faster knockdown recovery, so I guess if I do go onto the ground for any reason and I do get knocked down, it's nice to go and get up a little bit quicker. But for the most part, I'm just trying to go and get the ability duration. Again, do keep in mind mods like Brief Respite and Organ mods, um, any of these Organ mods, they don't work in terms of the conversion. So 40% energy spent on abilities convert to shields, you're not spending energy. So keep those mods in mind. If you do try and put them in there, you're not really getting most out of them, okay? Uh, you can always put them in there um, as like a secondary layer, but if you can always try and use like Stretch, um use things like continuity use things like intensify use those mods first and then if you want to put august secrets in on top of intensify you can do all right so anyways um as for the uh arcanes we go more augmented now this is going to go and just give us a bit of scaling strength towards the build so if you're in the mission for longer fantastic if you're not in the mission for longer i would substitute that out and i would go for vigor molt vigor this basically just means on uh you get 45% uh, strength on next Warframe ability cast. You can put that on your fourth or you can put that on your third or whatever it is you want to go airborne with and then stay airborne. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with it. So if you're doing quick missions like exterminate or rescue or spy, capture, whatever, chuck that on, um, go straight into your operator, use an operator ability, whatever ability you want to, then go and transform into your Warframe and then go just press four. So at least that way, this gets a bit more damage increase, which is fine. If not, you could do more augmented, but that's going to help literally everything here. It's going to help pillage, it's going to help bellfire, literally everything. Um, so this is better for scaling purposes, okay? Endurance missions, survival, defense, whatever you want to go and call it. So to go ahead and talk about this part, um, we're going to lead into the next part. So combat discipline and Avenger. Let's talk about that. Whenever you go and kill an enemy, you will lose health. Um, so that's important, right? Now your allies um, will go ahead and gain health on kill. We don't care about allies, <laughs> but you lose health on kill. Now, Arcane Avenger says on damage, 21% chance to 21% uh, chance for a 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. Now, that's going to be kind of important. The reason being is because Arcane Avenger acts as like a final additive critical chance to your builds. In terms of whenever you're modded, like you've got the, the base critical chance of a, a weapon. So let's say it's like 5%. And then mods that you put on the weapon are normally multiplicative. So 120% on top of that, whatever it then 120% on actually I'll put it this way 45% multiplicative mods on a 5% base is not going to yield that much but a final additive like a final crit mod will add 45 onto 5 and why do I keep saying that because if we go towards the build which is going to be the bellfire fire over here you can see that that is just 5% critical chance. But if, if that Arcane Avenger procs on the 21% chance going to be damaged, which will be fine because we kill lots of enemies here. So that 21% is easy to go and proc um, for 12 seconds as well. Um, we're actually going to go and get 50% critical in total. We add the 45 to the 5, we get 50. So every single shot that you're doing is kind of like a coin flip, whether or not you're critting. But that's going to be nice though. You'll, so you'll see I don't actually have any increased critical chance on this build because there's just no point at this point. It's so low that the multiplicative just isn't really worth it so for the build itself here what we're now going to go and do is we're going to take flat damage now for those who are wondering what about galvanized shot from what i've had a little look at and from what i've mostly been told is it doesn't work on the aoe side of things so it's not very good if you want like the longer story short don't run it basically also if you do go for a status related build i don't know why you would but if you do go for it i think the most that you can return is like 42 percent if you run 460 mods and a galvanize but again it doesn't you, you also need a damage mod in there because then this fu doesn't function as well so it's a long story short just don't go for a status build you want to try and go for raw damage you might be wondering why have i got status in here it just helps a little bit i don't really need it i guess i could just go flat viral here if i wanted to but i want to go ahead and just try and bump up and see if i can go and help some other values so damage is fine 
critic um scaling multi-shot is great so galvanized diffusion if you don't have galvanized diffusion barrel diffusion works put that in there um lethal torrent gives you fire rate and multi-shot now i won't i won't lie to you fire rate as a whole is fantastic for this and um, when you're airborne if you want to expend more and more shots and just really feel like you're like gunning down raining down from the sky you want more fire rate and the free fire rate mods that i would encourage would be lethal torrent gunslinger and there's also another one that gives you radiation at the same time it's called accelerated isotype that you get in like whispers of the wall kind of content um if you haven't got to that stage it's okay but anyways you should have if you've done if you're on steel path like i am right now um that fire rate can also be used here as well which is fantastic i kind of miss not using that but um when i go with zada's whisper Sardis Whisper effectively makes this mod kind of double itself, which is really bizarre. So instead of getting like a 0.55, I believe I actually get a 1.1. So this would actually turn to a 2.10 is what we would see there. I believe it's that. I believe that's, we've done quite a fair bit of testing on it. But if you go read on the Wikipedia, you'll see that it basically like dips into itself again. So you, if you go Sardis Whisper, you basically want to run a faction mod. If you don't go Sardis Whisper, or if you don't want to go, you don't have to run a faction mod. Does that make sense? If you, you are taking a foot Sardis, but you do want this, because again, maybe I could put the text on the screen at this point, so you, it helps you understand. But yeah, it's really, really good, and it will yield you with more overall damage, because uh, we're just dipping into it again, which is nice. Um, we want some critical damage because we want the 3.1 multiplier, which is fantastic. 3.1 multiplier, what we're doing total is going to be huge. A little bit more fire rate is going to be fantastic. And then, like I said, ideally, um, I'll show you this build here and then I'll show you what you can be looking at. It's something like that. So this is like 124,000, just flat damage there. This shows you that in this one where I'm not running it, so if I'm not running Zada's Whisper as well, um, I can get more fire rate here and I can get more damage on top of it. And then I can just go for like corrosive. I get all three elements on top of that, which is huge. This is a lot of damage, which is really, really nice. This also works. You can run this if you don't have combat discipline and arcane avenger, okay? So if you're like, oh, I don't have that arcane and you know, I can't do this build. No, you can just you won't get the critical side of it so if you want to go critical sides you want combat discipline and arcane avenger okay if you don't care about the critical sides and you don't care about sata's whisper either you can run this instead just a flat build okay very very flat build still works just as well still kills all steel path all right okay that's both of those done. So it's going to cover a few other things. Uh, we've got Talford shards. So Talford shards here. Um, shield capacity, shield capacity, shield capacity, shield capacity. <laughs> and then this one's strength. Uh, the reason for that is because this is for my other build. So I kind of still need this here for my other build. It allows me to fully strip a pillage. So that's for my other build, not for this build. Ideally, what I could go and put in here is, I honestly, I'd probably just do another shield capacity. Um, it just works really well with her and it synergizes well. You don't really need cast speed with her like most of what you're doing feels pretty smooth anyways i guess one cast speed wouldn't hurt but on this build there's not an awful lot of casting going on this is always active this is always active this you cast speed isn't really doing anything for that so you don't have to worry about it and then this is super quick to cast so you're fine um so you don't really need cast speed on here just shields is fine just go and whack up shields blue shards uh, uh azor off you go all right you could go ability strength and crimson if you wanted to there's nothing wrong with that uh, or ability duration if you want to go and keep the passive uh, keep the active up for a bit longer now other things i want to go and show you just real quick is um two other little tips number one okina prime is a incarnate weapon that you can get on weak i believe as of right now it might be subject to change it's week a of steel path incarnates but the reason why i'm going to bring this up is because the movement speed that you get in here actually affects the movement speed of you when you're in flight this is basically like a stat stick for you right now so if you've not used this before consider getting it and just basically fly a little bit quicker um there's not much else to go and say there it's fantastic now there are a few other things as well that also help her in terms of movement um so i had some other things in here as well uh the uh, dashing is affected by park of velocity which we'll get to in a moment uh, flight speed is affected by a keener movement speed and flight speed is also affected by arcane phantasm so if you go ahead and block you also get a 60 percent chance to speed which is also good um so yeah, over, oh, that's actually the wrong way around. But yeah, anyways, uh, this is movement speed. That's speed. <laughs> I, oh no, that no, it isn't. It's actually the right way around. Never mind. So uh, that's how basically that works, which is fantastic. Um, this also means if you have a vault in your team, yes, a vault can also just send you flying. So if you've got a vault, uh, if you want to play as a duo or a trio, whatever you're playing as, uh, get a vault in your team and you can also just whiz by with it. You can also go and use really funny things as well, like um, vile. 
uh, flask for anybody who doesn't know. If I ever find it here, this disability here, sorry, file rush, um, is from um, Lavos subsume. So if you subsume Lavos, you can also go and use this. It basically turns you into like a, a carpet bomber. It's really funny. So you can also go and do that as well if you want to go and put that in there and just kind of mess about more of the builds. Um, but more importantly as well um it was the movement speed here as well and then the parkour velocity is increased by dashing so if you have a secondary weapon equipped just go and put in the amalgam barrel diffusion that i believe you get from it's either Rapodolist on jupiter or it's from fermia fractures and i don't know which one it's from off the top of my head so i'll let you guys go and do the research it's from one of them okay but this also gives you increased dodge speed as well so getting a bit more movement speed so that you can move around a little bit quicker but also making your dash speed up is really really good um so definitely consider both of those when you are doing this build as for the rest of it everything else is quite generic we go and run matarai because it just gives us damage increases and you can go and run any kind of companion i run the Diriga companion here it's just a primer build. I'm not going to explain all this, but it's just a primer build. And then I go and run this here. If you've watched my videos before, you've seen me explain this like a billion times. But I just basically go and run that. Overall, though, that is like the entire build basically built together. So, um, oh, I lost my voice there. So up on the screen, I'm going to go and put some gameplay uh, footage up on the screen here so you can see what exactly what it's like. Uh, but yeah, Hildren is fantastic. This is exactly something that I believe she needed going for her. Um, so honestly, hats off to DE for this one. Age of Storm was a wasted potential in my opinion. I believe this came out around the release of the game called Anthem. If you guys remember Anthem coming out, Hildren seems like she was inspired by Anthem. Rest in peace. Um, so yeah, just like Anthem, her Age of Storm kind of died. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't really that fun to use. So it's great that they breathe some life into this. Um, I guess we also have Jade to thank for this. So Jade's fourth ability as well also allows you to go and use uh, subsumables in her fourth, her glory. Um, and now Heldrin can also go and use it as well. So thank you, Jade, for that. Um, but yeah, no, just overall really good. Just really good damage. Your, your damage output will be tremendously great. Your survival will also be really good as well because you'll be using pillage quite a fair bit. It's a very easy to play build not really thinking about what you're doing i would say the biggest issue that it may have is um particular particular tile sets so some tile sets you might have to go ahead and jump across things or go up things go down things although she's better with her movement she's still not absolutely perfect with her movement so if there's ramps <laughs> you will be targeting ramps rather than just constantly trying to jump up over things because she has like a height cap as to how high she can go so that's a little bit of a problem, but otherwise, no, she's she's fine. I, I really do like her. Um, even Acolytes as well, not really that much of an issue. You'll probably either one, one to three shot them. It, well, it's more like two to three shot them. You won't one shot them. It's more like two to three shot them, um, which is just great. And facts, facts enemies as well, also great. In terms of bossing, I don't really know how great it is for bossing. I didn't really see this as like a bossing build, but uh, I guess I can leave you guys go ahead and test that out. But anyways, that's it from me. I hope you guys are going to bring you back here. Yeah, what it be? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope you guys learned something new here with Hildred as well. Honestly, super fun to go and play. Uh, this will definitely be my main Hildred build to go ahead and use going forwards. Like I said, maybe just the movement on particular tile sets I'm not going to like, but outside of that, um, honestly, they cooked with this one. Very happy for her. I'm glad that we got an Age of Storm and Balefire in one, both being buffed to the point where they're both actually really usable in synergy with each other big thumbs up anyways if you enjoyed watching today's video please go and like share subscribe whatever you guys can go and do to go and help me i really appreciate it but as always guys i'll be seeing you guys again in the next video take care guys take care <laughs>